Hi guys, a lot of students have trouble with Charles and Boyle's laws. Um, part of the problem that students have is that the definitions that you, you find in textbooks are a little overly complicated, and that's because scientists like to be very precise with their language, so they're using very specific words, but I think it's more useful if you just sort of think of these in very kid-friendly definitions. So let's start with the definitions that I have up here. So for Boyle's Law, very simply put, we have observed over time that if you compress a gas, if you push it into a smaller space and make it take up less space, like you see in the picture on the top up here, right? We went from that to this. If you compress a gas, the pressure that that gas exerts will increase. And you can kind of think of this like when we played with the syringes and I had you depress the plunger in the syringe, when you did that, you probably noticed that as long as you kept your finger over the hole where the air can't escape, that the pressure increased, 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 increased the longer you tried to press, and it got harder and harder the closer together you brought the top and bottom of the syringe. And th this should make sense to you why this happens. It's because the particles of a gas are in motion, and that motion is what causes pressure in the first place. The particles are literally pressing against the sides of the syringe every time they collide with it. So the more collisions you have and the faster the collisions are happening, the more pressure builds up inside of your syringe. So if we give the particles of gas less room to move around in, that increases the number of collisions per second and that's why the pressure goes up. Because now those little bouncy balls of gas particles are colliding with the syringe plunger Far more, off, far more often than they were before. So that's Boyle's Law up here. And then Charles's Law is about temperature and a gas. So if I heat a gas, it will expand because the particles will collide with each other and push against one another much more, and so they will, have been, they will be forced apart, right? So whenever particles speed up, they have a tendency to spread further and further apart. They just need more room because the collisions that they have force them apart. And I often show this to students by taking my fists and simulating two particles colliding at slow speed and then doing it again with two particles that collide at high speed. And you'll notice if you do this with your fists, when they collide at slow speed, your fists sort of bounce off each other very lightly. But if you do it at a higher speed, they bounce apart much further. And that's kind of what happens as you heat a gas, the particles collide with more force, so they push away from each other and away from the walls much more, and they'll take up more room. So one other thing besides the definitions themselves being a little confusing, the other thing that kind of bugs students is they get them confused with each other because they're both very similar laws. One describes the relationship between pressure and volume, and the other describes the relationship between temperature and volume. So my advice is memorize one, and the other one is just the other one. So just pick one of them. I like Charles's Law. I find it easier to understand the temperature um, relationship, but it, maybe it's different for you. Maybe you prefer boils. So whichever one is easier for you to remember, just remember that one. And then when the other one comes up, go, okay, that has to be the other relationship. That's the best way to go about it. You'll also notice that the definitions bother to tell you that the third variable always stays the same. So for example, in Boyle's Law, the relationship in Boyle's Law is between um, volume, we're changing the volume, that's our independent variable, right? So the volume changes from here to here. And as a result, pressure changes, that's the dependent variable. There's a third variable that's remaining constant though, and that's the temperature. Because if we were also changing the temperature of the gas, that would also change pressure and volume. So when you're looking at Boyle's Law, you have to remember temperature is remaining constant, and that's why they throw it into the definition. But I don't really feel like you need to worry about that part of the definition. Same thing happens with Charles's Law. In Charles's Law, we're changing the temperature, that's our independent variable, as a result of the temperature changing, the volume is increasing, that's our dependent variable, and in order, for, in order for you to see the relationship between temperature and volume, you've got to keep the third variable constant, which is pressure. And you can see that you're doing that here by keeping the compression object, the object that's causing the pressure, 
isn't changing. We're putting the same amount of pressure on it at all times, which is what allows it to expand. If you were holding your thumb on that and as you heated it, you kept adding more and more pressure, you'd be able to keep that gas from expanding. So you can see why you're not allowed to increase the pressure because if you did that, then the volume would not necessarily be able to increase, right? If you put your thumb on the scale, you could keep it from going up because you'd be adding pressure. So you gotta keep pressure constant. And that's it for Boyles and Charles's Law. See you in class.